What's up guys, Vixen here, and I haven't done a tutorial in a really long time, uh, mainly because I didn't really know what to do it on, but uh, today I decided I'm going to do it on Griebler and how to use it. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And just a heads up, um, my Cinema 4D is going to look a little different because I did just get Windows 8 and it kind of screws with uh, Photoshop and Cinema 4D. Uh, I think the issue is, is I have to reinstall them for it to uh, run properly, but what the issue is in here is uh, when I extrude something, it doesn't really like show it extrude, but it really is, so I have to render it out just to see what it is. It makes it kind of difficult, but uh, when I render it, it doesn't really... The tutorial, what I'm going to do is going to show you how to do it anyway, so you don't really need to see what it looks like on my screen for it to work on yours. So, first of all, um, you're going to want to make whatever you want in uh, Cinema 4D. So if you want to put Griebler on a, let's say, we'll do a logo... Let me uh, get a logo out of here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And we will do Dare, of course. Simple. Alrighty. Let me just drag that here in the center. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. There we go. Alright. So we got my Dare logo right here. And I'm lagging. That's alright, though. And I'm going to, let me just get these extruded out here to show you my issue that I'm having. Like, right now, it doesn't say that. It, see how it has, like, the white lines right there? It doesn't really show it's extruded, but it is. Well, it does show. You just can't see it, but that's all right, though. Um, let me give it some depth. And all right, so let me render this out to see how that looks. Turn off all my settings. All right, there we go. And I'll just put a texture right here on it. Lower this down. See what we got here. This will do just fine. Okay, actually, I'm going to take off that. Okay, sorry about the delay. I have not did all this before I started recording, but that is all right. Um, all right, so if you don't have Griebler, it is a plug-in, so you're going to have to go just Google Griebler, and it should come up, and you should be able to find how to uh, get it for free. Uh, I can't give you a link to it because I don't know where I got it from. I cannot remember, but and, and I'm kind of lazy to figure out where I got it from, so I'll leave that on you. Um, where it's going to be at is up here in plugins, Griebler right above Throwsy, and you put that right there. Now you're going to take your layer that you want to put Griebler on, and you're going to put it, drag it, and put it under the Griebler. And as you can see on my screen, it doesn't do anything, but on your screen it will. If I just click render real quick, you can see how it gave it all the blocks on the side, and it uh, it totally screws up the logo at first because you got to edit it first. So you're just going to click on Griebler. And you're going to go to uh, object, I mean not object, my bad, base, and you're going to turn down the height and max, uh, the height for minimum and maximum. Um, I would turn minimum down to zero, and maximum to about, we'll just do three right now and render that out and see how it looks. Now you can actually see the logo a little bit better. Um, now, to see all these little, like, uh, I don't know, they call them greebles. They're like these little things that stick out of it. If you want to get rid of those and you only want the uh, logo to look like it has uh, like rectangles all over it, you just go to stock greebles and you just check the box. And it will take them all off and then you will just have this just like this. I generally use this. I don't like to have little things all over the place mainly because you don't really see them and it kind of makes the render time uh, go a lot up. So... That right there is pretty much, well, I wouldn't call it the basics because that's really basic, but you can get, uh, what I like to do with it is um, you go back to your layer, that you your actual like logo layer, not the Griebler, and you go to Caps, and you go down here to Ngons, and you click that and change it to Quadril Angles, and you click Regular Grid, and you go down to uh, about, I'm going to go 6 right here, and just render that out. What it does is it actually puts the um, effect not only on the sides but also on the front. So it looks like it is coming out of the front too as well as the sides. Now if 
the make the squares smaller, you will decrease this. Hold on one second, my bad. Okay, I'm back. I had to let my dog out. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, like I was saying, it makes it come out on the front as the sides, as well as the sides. So to make the boxes on the front smaller or bigger, you're going to mess with this number right here. So if I lower this down to three, the boxes should be really tiny, just like that, which is actually a really good size. I like it around three for the uh, logos that I use. Um, yeah, if you go around like 10, it really, it makes it really big, and I guess it's, that kind of looks cool too, but I don't know. Um, and something else I like to do. Now, I'll lower this back down to, th eh, we'll go, just go four. All right, now, let's say you've seen some of my backgrounds and I have like a multicolored squares on it. Um, how I do that is I take my entire layer, so I close that up and I just take my entire Grieber layer and I will duplicate it. That's Control C to copy and Control V if you're using Windows. Um, once you have that, you're going to go over here to object and you're going to click random C. Just make it different than what the first one is. The first one is going to be one, two, three, four. I'll make this one, two, three, five. It doesn't matter what you do. It's just going to randomize the Griebler and make it look different. And now I'm going to put a different color. So I'll copy this material and I'll just make this. All right, we'll do orange. And I will put that on the new Griebler. Now, when I render it, it's going to come out in different colors. Just like that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I like to do with my uh, backgrounds. I like to have renders that have multicolor because it uh, makes for a nice effect that I do that I'm not going to tell you guys right now because that is my style pretty much. But away from that, uh, to add on top of what we have already learned in this wonderful tutorial, I'm going to get rid of the first layer, I mean the second layer that I just put the orange on, so I'm back to with my just my white layer. And I'm going to go back to Griebler. And I'm just going to go turn, go to base, and I'm going to turn this down just to one. So it's barely even there. We barely have a uh, slight raise in the logo. And I'm going to go back to object, I believe. Yes, object. And now subdivision, this normally doesn't work well with logos. It makes every it like divides every square by two, so it, it pretty much a doubles the amount of squares you have. So if I just moved it up by one, and by doing that, it already cut every square in size by half. And once I put my render settings back on, this will take ages to render, at least with my computer and what I have. But it does look kind of cool. And as you can see, it also split it along the sides right here. Before it was just a full piece. Now it has two pieces that are a different length. So if I were to do it again, now I don't even know how how high you can do this. I don't know if it'll crash because it is a lot. And as you can see right now, it already is looking like it's messed up. You see some blank spots right here. So I don't really recommend doing that. Although if you can get away with it looking good, that's fine. I guess we could try, if we were to do the multicolor one again, copy and paste that, and give that a random seed and put the orange back on it. Let's see what that would look like. So I guess that looks kind of cool. I have uh, haven't seen a render like that, so be my guest if you want to do one like this. It looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um think there was one more thing let me just look around oh yeah okay so I'm gonna go turn my subdivision back to zero all right now go to stock greebles and open up the settings tab and make sure you have this enabled and the stock greebles once again are the things on the side of it um, now see how when I render it there's a lot on there you probably will not want that that's a lot of uh, unnecessary pieces so you just go over here to uh, sparsity and the higher the number the less uh, pieces are going to be on so if I turn up to 50 percent it'll take away half the greebles which is uh, a little more reasonable when you're talking about a render it looks a little nicer so I'll just keep that right there and now let's say I don't really want them on 
the uh, logo. I want it to look like it's kind of blowing up and the pieces are flying off. Well, to do that, you go down here to Surface Offset, and you just make these bigger. And as you hold out, hold that down, you can see how the pieces, they start to go move away from the piece. So I'll make the minimum amount they can go off is 10, and the max they can get off is 25. So if I render that out, it looks like the pieces are all over the place. Let's let that render out a little more. Yeah, it looks like the pieces are all rendering all over the place, which is, uh, I used to do this effect, but I kind of stopped because I got bored of it. Uh, it still looks cool. still looks cool, so uh, don't mind me when I say that. Uh, and yeah. So that's pretty much it for my group or tutorial. It works good with text, too. Uh, my dogs are starting to bark, so I think that's a time to say I have to go now. So peace out, guys.